I'm Tom Keller, Morning Dove Biologist for the Pennsylvania Game Commission. This is a training video for the Pennsylvania Envirothon. Each year, managers throughout the Commonwealth band over 800 morning doves. The information we glean from this helps us determine seasons and bag limits from year to year. We look at things like survival, abundance, harvest estimate, and recruitment. These are extremely important not only in management but also helping us understand population estimates in Pennsylvania and throughout the nation. Once we have a bird in hand, we look at several characteristics to determine age, sex, and then we place a small aluminum band on its leg. Let's take a closer look at how we get to age and sex by reviewing several dove wings and some bird mounts. As we begin to look at morning dove wings, it's important to be able to tell the different parts or feather groups. Let's first take a look at the primary feathers. These are the first 10 feathers along the trailing edge of the wing. Then we have secondary feathers. These are the next 12 feathers and then tertiary feathers following the secondaries. All the small feathers up above these are called coverts and there's different groups of coverts. But the most important to remember are the primary coverts, which are these that cover those first 10 primary covert feathers. To determine age, feather mold is an important characteristic to pay attention to. Birds molt their feathers at least once each year, sometimes multiple times. Morning doves molt once, beginning in the early summer, and most adult morning doves will have their molt completed by the beginning of October. Morning doves, like most other birds, will molt several feathers at a time so as to remain flight capable. But that is not the case with all birds, such as waterfowl, which have a synchronous molt, meaning that they lose all of their feathers within a two to three week period. In adult morning doves, primaries are molted once every 14 days, meaning it takes approximately 140 days to molt all of their primaries. With immatures, they begin to molt within 25 to 30 days after hatch. This can be tricky because of the long nesting and hatching period of morning doves beginning in early spring and lasting through early fall. As an example of molt, here we have a wing with a very easy to see primary that is molting, this small feather that's just growing in. On your right, we have several feathers that have already been molted. It's generally easy to tell they have a very clean edge and they generally are darker colored. On your left, we have some feathers that have not been molted yet. These are not as neat or clean and are often frayed at the end and not nearly as straight and are much often a lighter color brown. As another example of molt, here we have a wing and it's fairly easy to see the color difference with this wing as well as the size difference. Our molted feather that's just coming in is right here and then these four first primaries, a much lighter brown color, frayed at the edges, and not near as nice and clean and neat as the feathers that have been molted. Also, this is a good example of how the primary coverts also will be molted. And so you can see here we have two or three primary coverts that have not been molted, a lighter brown color, as opposed to this dark gray color. In order to successfully age and sex a dove, we'll be using the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service key. This key is very helpful as you run through dove wings as well as look at other characteristics on the body to determine sex. Let's use this key to run through several dove wings. This first example we'll be looking at molt and then age. To look at molt, we will begin counting the primaries. These primaries are numbered starting at 10 and going backwards. So let's go ahead and do that. This is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 is the small molted, 2, and 1. These other feathers are secondaries. So here we have all of our primary feathers. As we look at molt, again, remember the color as well as the actual feather growing in. Here it's very easy to determine molt. So let's count again to determine which feather this is that has molted. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. 
Three is our molt, and this is what you will write down. In some cases, you may not be able to tell what molt is, and that would be unknown. In some cases, there won't be an obvious molting number, and so that will be classified as zero. So now that we have our molt, let's move on to age. In order to age this, we will look at the primary coverts first. Remember, the primary coverts are these small feathers directly above the primary feathers. A good example of what a juvenile or hatch year bird looks like compared to an adult or after hatch year is these buffy tips of these primary coverts. These buffy tips signify a juvenile bird. This one is very obvious as we have many, many buffy tips. They can range from a white to a cream colored tip and are often frazzled at the end. Sometimes you may only have one buffy tip primary covert, but that still signifies a hatchier bird. With this wing, again, let's use our key and key out what the mold is as well as the age. 10, 9, 8, 7. We see a very obvious molting feather here. What we don't see though is a smaller feather underneath. So there is a shaft that is very small, quarter to half inch. So let's include that again and go back. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Don't be fooled by this small feather here. This is actually the last molting feather of the secondaries. Again, another good example of this dark gray color versus this light brown color. So now that we have our molt, let's take a look at age. As we look at our primary coverts, we don't see any buffy tips. And so this would be classified as an after hatch year or an adult bird. This is a great example of an adult bird as many of these feathers have been replaced. Here's a good example of both the juvenile and adult wings side by side. Notice on your left, the many buffy tip primary coverts, and on your right, the very clean edges of many of the feathers. Here's an example of a wing that will oftentimes throw banders for a loop. Let's take another look using our key. Counting down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. This one is more of a color that is showing me that the actual molted feather is number eight. These two first primaries, 10 and nine, are both brown with ragged tips. This one, number eight, is obviously very clean and new. When we look at our key, any primaries that are molted between 10 and eight we have to put unknown age because of the lateness of the molt. Anything between one and seven, as long as there are no buffy tip primary coverts, is considered an adult. But another thing on this wing in particular, even though we would call this an unknown age, if you notice, there's one primary covert here with a buffy tip, and that's all it takes for us to be able to show that this is a hatch year bird. To determine sex of a morning dove, there are several characteristics that we should look at. Before you do so, take a look at your data sheet. If any doves are aged at hatch year or juveniles, or they are unknown, they cannot be sexed and will be classified as unknown sex. If they are aged as, as an adult, we'll take a look at the following characteristics. The first is the breast. A male will have a rosy pink breast, and the breast area is right here, and you can see the rosy hue to the breast area. The second and third characteristics that we should look at is the crown, which is the top of the head, and the nape, which is the back of the neck and down into the shoulders. The crown and nape should be slate or bluish colored, running from the top of the crown down through the nape. This should be very evident 
in an adult male. In comparison, a female morning dove will have an olive or brown color in the crown, the nape, and the breast. And this olive color will be uniform throughout the body. Sometimes when you have a dove in hand, it's not very evident as to what the sex is. You won't have a very strong rosy breast, but there might be some color, or you might have some bluish gray slate on the back of the neck and nape, but not a lot. Do not be afraid to label these as unknown sex, as sometimes it's not evident or not clear. I'll now demonstrate how to band a morning dove. These are the bands that we use. These are called aluminum butt end bands. They're made of soft aluminum, which are easy to manipulate. We have special pliers made that fit each size band. And so these are specifically made for dove bands. We open the band to, so it's wide enough to place on the leg of the dove. And then we position that band inside of the pliers like so. This way we can easily feed it on to the dove leg, make sure that it's correct, and then crimp it down. I'm going to demonstrate this on this mounted dove. So now that we have the band in place, we're going to put it onto the leg. We turn it a little to make sure we're not catching any skin or feathers. And then we crimp it down. Once the band is attached, it will not come off. On the band, there is a unique serial number for each bird banded. On the top of the band, there's a website. At this website, you can report this band if it's been harvested or if you've trapped it and encountered it again. The information that we can gain off of this gives us good information on movement of where these birds were banded versus where they were reported.